So, we are talking in this class about adapting the products and services for both the consumers and business. So, this is an important part of your project. How are you going to adapt your uh, product or the customers in a certain country? So, we said that markets perceive quality in a different way. And quality is very important. We have to have quality. Our product has to have quality to sell well. So an example of this is in Russia. Do you eat red October chocolate in Russia? Red October chocolate. Which chocolate do you eat? Red October chocolate or Mars or Cadbury chocolate? You don't eat chocolate? Do you eat chocolate? What chocolate brand do you eat? Milka. Milka from Switzerland? Yeah. Mm, you too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when did you start eating lots of chocolates? Since a young age or just recently? No, since young age. I see. Anyway, after Russia opened up its market, the foreign companies like Mars, you know Mars? They started to sell their chocolate bars in Russia, but they thought, let's just send the low quality product, almost out of date or damaged product, to, for sales in Russia. And then also there was some kind of illegal sales of chocolate. So in the illegal sales, the packing wasn't good, the goods got damaged. So because the foreign chocolate was not too high quality, this company called Red October, Changed. They changed their packaging, changed their product, made a better product. And the Russian taste is slightly different. Is it true that you prefer more dark chocolate in Russia? It's not true. <laughs> Some people. Some type of chocolate with liquor. Yes, yeah, chocolate with liquor. So, Red October was able to make this kind of better quality chocolate, so the Russians changed and instead of the foreign brand being the top selling chocolate the Russian brand, Red October, became the top selling product because the foreign brands didn't pay enough attention to quality they thought it's okay just to send lower quality and almost out of date chocolate so the chocolate was off colour did you ever buy chocolate which is a strange colour? a little bit different colour, right? or the packaging was damaged or something was wrong so it just shows if we don't have the quality, then product, people's preferences will change. So we have to have quality in today's competitive global market. We have to decide whether to standardize or adapt a product uh, to make the quality. So we have to decide, for example, uh, can we uh, meet the taste of what those people think, that country's think is quality with a standardized product? Or do we have to customize our product just for that country to make sure that they can uh, get what they think is the quality? So we often have to adapt to different countries because they have different laws and regulations. So we are forced to adapt, like video games. So do you like violent video games? Do you like violent video games? <laughs> mm, with chainsaws, mm, guns. No? Does anybody like violent video games? Yes. Yes, you do. What kind of video game? Call of Duty? Um, no. Um, just GTA. Just GTA. What about you? Don't know the name of the game you play? No. Oh. Check the name the next time before you play the game. <laughs> so in some countries you can't show blood on the video game. But in other countries you can show blood on the video game. So we have to change our video game, the graphic, so it shows no blood for one country. So according to the law, we may also have to change our product. Uh, we also have to remember about green marketing these days. So do you, 
care about green if the product is green or not when you're buying a product? Or you don't care? Yes. You care? So these days we have uh, eco-labeling, eco that kind of thing. Controlling the packaging component. So some companies can get the advantage. For example, in Germany, Hoover uh, washing machine, they got the eco-labeling. Eco-labeling is uh, just a label that you pass to some test for energy conservation. So this company increased their sale by three times, 300% in Germany and 50% in the UK for the washing machine because they were the only company in the washing machine category that could get the, eco the official eco-label. So because they were this only company, they were able to increase their sales. Did you ever buy a washing liquid for clothes? Do you wash your own clothes? Yes. yes. Did you ever buy washing liquid? Yes. yes. Do you buy the big bottle or do you buy the refill package? Big, big, bottle. Bottle. big bottle. Big bottle? Why don't you buy the refill package? Do you know what I mean with the refill package? Hmm? Do you know what I mean by refill package? Yes. yes. It saves about 75% of the packaging. It's lighter for transport, so it saves petrol for transporting. So a company, the first company who made this a refill package, Lenore, this is a refill package, right? So the next time your mother is going shopping, you can ask her, Mommy, Mommy, buy the refill package, it's better for the environment. <laughs> okay, do you go shopping with your mother? No. No, why not? You can help her carrying the bags. Does she carry the bag by herself? Yes, my mother used to force me to go shopping with her when I was a teenager or a student. So I could carry the bags, do those kinds of things. Your mother doesn't force you to do that? You're lucky. Okay, so uh, Lenore introduced this new refill packet. Their sales went up by 10 or 12 percent in the US, also in Europe. Sales went up by 10 or 12 percent. So if the company can get ahead on the green marketing, they can get some advantage. Okay? These days also there's laws about solid waste. The law is in Europe that between 25% and 65% of the packaging has to be recycled. And the company is also responsible for recycling their packaging. So the company has to pay money to the local uh, recycling company uh, to make the recycling points so that they, depending on how big their package are, is. So if the company makes small packaging, it can pay less money to the, towards recycling in the end. So, we mentioned a little bit before about the product and culture. So a product is a bundle. Do you understand bundle? It's like a group of satisfactions like an airline is also a bundle of satisfactions like good service by the air hostess, okay? nice food, my bags are delivered on time, okay? I get there safely, group of services, not just the basic one. So the psychological attributes of a product can vary across countries. Okay? So uh, Diet Coke, do you think Diet Coke is healthy? In Korea? No? So do you even have Diet Coke in Korea? Not really. Why? Korean people don't associate soft drink with anything to do with diet, right? Whereas in another country they think, <coughs> maybe if I drink the diet soft drink, it's better than the other soft drink. So some cultures think that. Other cultures might think, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I'm drinking sugar in the soft drink or I'm, I'm eating a Big Mac so if I just have some small difference in my soft drink it's not going to make much difference, right? Uh, instant cakes uh, in some countries they don't have ovens so they can't make instant cakes other countries some countries they think cakes are for we explained before cake is just like a dessert Did you have, do you have cakes for dessert in Korea? No, we have cakes for dessert in Ireland or the UK. 
So my mother bakes a cake and then you can family can eat after the dinner for dessert. So you guys think cakes are for gift or special occasion, right? Uh, what about cosmetics? Cosmetics have different uh, cultures. In Korea, women use cosmetics a lot more than in Ireland. Or even in Italy or France, women use a lot of cosmetics a lot more than in Ireland or the UK. So, so for some women, why are you laughing? Yeah. Okay. So some people think cosmetics is just for special occasions. Uh, other people think cosmetics is for every day. When I go to the shop, I had an Italian friend once and she told me she liked living in Wales because when she was living in Italy, even she went to the shop to buy milk, she has to dress up a lot and put on some makeup. Otherwise people will be criticizing her. But when she went to Wales, she can wear just tracksuit, no makeup, just go out to the shop, get some milk, come back. Nobody, nobody cares. It's a different culture. Right? And English books in Japan are seen as educational books. So English books in other countries is just for reading, for fun, right? Yes. I buy the book because I, I'm interested in the book and I want to... But in Korea, are English books also seen as educational things? Do you buy an English book to, for fun or to improve your English? English novel? Hmm? To improve your English? So that, that has a different function in a different markets. So we can market our books in Japan uh, more as an educational way. So <laughs> we can find a lot of examples of products which have different, different psychological attributes. People have different ideas about the satisfaction uh, from the product. <laughs> so what is innovation? Can anybody explain to me what is innovation? What does innovative mean? Making something better. Developing. So basically an idea which is new is an innovation. Any idea which people accept as new is an innovation. So if our product is innovative, uh, it's going to be determining the degree of newness as perceived by the intended market. So the market we're selling it in might think that our product, it's a new idea. In our country, it might already have been existing. But in the other country, it could be seen as an innovation or a new idea. So it takes time to uh, diffuse. Do you understand diffusion? Diffusion? Diffuse? If I put some ink into the water, what happens? Spread. Diffuse, that's the word, diffusing, right? Does it diffuse very quickly? No. It takes a long time to go through all the water. So it's the same for a new idea. So we want to spread it out into the society. But it depends on our ability to communicate the new attributes of the product properly to the people. Do, pe do people always want to try something new, or do they prefer what they're used to? Depends. What do you think, usually, generally? Used. Hmm? Do you prefer to do some, use something you're used to, or something new? Depends on the product. I think it's very, it can be generalized. Okay. So anyway, we need to convince people that our product is good enough that they change to, from what they're used to. If I'm used to using a smartphone from Android, maybe I don't want to change to Apple smartphone because I, I, it's not, I mean, where is the function? Where is the thing, right? Oh, that's not the same as I'm used to. But if Apple can convince me that their new innovation is worth it, then I can change to uh, using their phone, right? So it takes time. To, for a new product to be accepted. So it can take a very long time. One example is coffee in Japan. Nowadays, many young Japanese people drink coffee. In Korea, you guys like coffee? There are a lot of coffee shops in Korea. Hands up, how many Korean students drink coffee? Just two? How many of your parents drink coffee? More? Oh, well. Maybe it's different than Japan. So in Japan, they old days, people didn't drink coffee, they drank a lot of tea. But Nestle made the plan to sell their coffee 
So they got the coffee flavored ice cream and they started selling coffee flavored ice cream. So the kids bought the coffee flavored ice cream. When they grew up to be adults, they were familiar with the coffee taste and they started to drink coffee. So in this case, coffee was the innovation, the new thing in Japan. It took a long time, 10 or 15 or 20 years to get people to drink, to diffuse this idea. So it depends on the product. Other ideas can be diffused very quickly, in just a matter of months you can have. Another example is microwave ovens. Microwave ovens, these days most houses have microwave ovens, but they were invented in the 50s. And it took about 20 years before most houses had a microwave oven. So the product, the new innovation spread quite slowly. Can you think of any new innovation which has spread quickly? Smartphones, right? Are you going to buy a smartwatch? No, why not? It's not useful? Yes. Okay. Bad news for the Apple CEO if he's watching the video. No. <laughs> Smart. The watches are not that useful, the new technology. I saw one person with the watch, but it didn't look very useful. Okay. Maybe after 20 years, everybody will have, do you think? Another one is online shopping. People thought in the 90s, oh, the shops are all going to close down. There was people panicking, right? Everyone, who would go outside to do their shopping anymore? Everybody's just going to do their shopping on the internet. But it didn't happen as quickly as people thought. It happened very slowly, people changing to online shopping. These days it seems to be picking up pace that online shopping is getting more popular, right? Do you guys do a lot of online shopping? What do you say you do more <coughs> if you're buying clothes? Online shopping or shopping in the store? Offline shopping? Do you guys? Shopping in the store? In the store? So, just me then, I like my own shop. <laughs> and get a good price. Compare all the things. I own clothes. Hmm? I own clothes. For clothes, for everything. I do online shopping. Yeah, I mean, uh, I do, um, I, uh, I buy clothes online in store. I buy clothes in the store for online. clothes, but everything else online. Yeah. See. Even now I buy my groceries online. Breakfast cereal, those kind of things. In Korea, you have free delivery, usually. You buy over 30,000 won. So Korea is quite useful for online shopping. Maybe you can start an online shopping company in Russia when you go back in a big city with free delivery. Okay, so we want to uh, get the largest number of customers in the market in the shortest space of time. So we have to convince them to change their <coughs> behavior. And we can make a guess. How can we guess how quickly our innovation will be accepted? What can we use to make a guess? So for example, I make Disneyland in Paris. What can I make use to make a guess how many people are going to come to Disneyland? That's a new thing in, in France. They didn't have any Disneyland before. I can just compare with Disneyland in the US or wherever. Yes, so usually we can compare with how it happened in another country. Actually, Disneyland in Paris wasn't very successful at the start. So, the main elements in uh, diffusion of new ideas is we have an innovation communicated through certain channels. How are we going to communicate it? Over time, it could take a long time, among the members of a social system. So, we discussed about the time. So, how new is the product? Some people might think it's not really new, right? If it's unfamiliar, it might not be a good idea. So, uh, for example, an American cake, cake company, instant cake company, they came to the UK and they found their product was too new for British people. They did some testing. They asked the British people, what kind of cakes do you like? And they found out that British people like very do you understand sponge cake? Sponge cake? Do you use sponge for washing the dishes? Have you ever eaten a sponge cake? Hmm? Sponge cake is a very simple cake, very easy to make. <coughs> so they found out that British people like sponge cake. So their cake was quite complicated and different cake. 
but they decided it's not going to diffuse well if we give them our cake. So you have to think about diffusion. Is it going to spread out among the people? Is it what people want? So what they did is they changed their cake to a more simple one. First of all, they introduced a simple cake, and they managed to get 34% of the market share from the British company. Because they made their product, it was a new product, but they adapted it to make it very simple, like the British people wanted. Okay? So this helped with the diffusion. If they just brought in their own product, it wouldn't have diffused very well. Then later, when people got used to their brand name and their product, they were able to change more flavors and more different types of the cake. So people would accept the idea easier. So we have to think about how to, to make the product spread out among the people. So uh, also the perceived attributes of the innovation, is it people like it or not? And how can we communicate the idea? is going to affect whether people uh, take on our new innovation or not. So these are the characteristics when people decide to accept a new innovation. Do you understand relative? Relative means comparing to two things, right? So relative advantage compared to the past. Is it compatible with our culture? Okay. Uh, is Instant cakes compatible with Korean and Japanese culture? What do you think? Instant cakes, are they compatible with Japanese and Korean culture? <coughs> do you want to? No, they're not, right? You don't cook cakes at home. Complexity, is it too hard? The American company found out that their making their cake was too hard for British customers. They want a very simple one. Uh, trialability, observability. Can we easily see the benefit of the product? Okay, so marketers have to think about this. You need to change people's perception to speed up the new product. People should think it's easy, it's compatible with the culture. They should think they get some advantage. They should be able to see the benefit clearly. They should think that there's no risk. If I, try, I can try this without any risk. Okay. Uh, also, if we're the first company, we can get some advantage. First mover advantage or pioneer brand advantage. Like, uh, do you know Biro? Have you ever heard of Biro? Biro is a, people just use Biro for saying pen in English. Biro is a company's name. Or in Korea you say scotch. What is scotch? Scotch. Tape, right? Is that the name of that's nobody says scotch in Ireland. They say sellotape. But sellotape is also a company name. They were the first company to make that, so they were called sellotape. Scotch was the first company to sell in Korea. So they call scotch, right? So if you were the first mover, your the name in the dictionary could even be your product name. So here is an important part for our project. This is the product component model. These are the three levels of the product. We have the core, it's like the earth. Inside the earth we have the core. We have packaging and support services. Which one do you think is the easiest to change? Which one is the hardest to change? Core. What is the core component of McDonald's? What's the core component of McDonald's restaurant, fast food restaurant? Fast food. What kind of fast food? Big Mac or burgers, right? Big Mac is their main product. Can McDonald's sell the Big Mac in India? No. No, so do you think McDonald's should just forget about India? No. no. Why not? They can just... Uh... It's a huge market. Yeah. Yeah. They can use vegetarian or lamb or something else, right? They use lamb in India. So sometimes we have to adapt our core product. So we can see even these days people are getting more health conscious about their food compared to 10 or 20 years ago. Do you think McDonald's needs to shut down? 
Oh, well, what can it do instead? Change this tray. Put more to what? salads on the menu? Yeah, but nowadays they have salads, they did in five or ten years ago, right? If things get even more health food, then they can take off the french fries and Big Mac, right? Make a different thing. So they can change, we can change the core component if we have to, when we go to another country. We're talking about the functional features of the product, product platform, the design. Which is the easiest one to, to change of these? Design is the easiest one. The design of the product is easier to change than the function, function of the product. Uh, so the next part then is the packaging. So, sometimes we have to change the core component, sometimes we don't. What would you say about packaging? Usually we have to change the packaging or usually we don't in another country. We have to. Usually we have to, right? First of all, we have laws. Laws about the packaging. You have to have the in two languages or three languages, right? If you're selling in, in the US, you have to put in English and Spanish, for example. Okay, or that kind of thing. So you have to change the language. Uh, we have to, some countries they don't allow you to say some things on the package, like we're the best, you might not be allowed to say that. Okay? In some countries with the low literacy, you might just have pictures on your package. So we mentioned before in Africa, a baby food company, they just put a picture of baby on their package. But the Africans thought, picture was what's inside the thing, right? So they thought there was babies, who were, which was inside the box. So that, that company made a mistake on their packaging. Okay? But we have to just uh, look through, we have to change the price, different countries have different prices. Brand name and trademark, we talked about Sonata and so on, the NF, that we can change the brand name, the trademark. The, we have to be careful about colors. Colors meaning different things in different countries. For example, one, uh, do you know nappies? Nappies? Babies wear nappies. Do you understand nappy? Yes? No? I, I don't want to have to explain it, so <laughs> I'll just show you a picture of a nappy. Babies and the wear So uh, this company was selling their nappies in China. They used a pink color. Their packaging was all pink. Can you see any problem with this? They use a very pink color. Pink is usually for babies, right? It's okay. Sound seems okay. Can you see any problem? Can you see any problem? Yes. So? So they didn't buy it for God. Yeah, so Chinese families, they have the once a child policy. So they didn't want people to think they have girls at home. So they, don't, they just don't like buying the pink nappies because it's associated with girls. And Chinese one child policy now have more boys in China than girls. Is it changing these days? But well, in your age group, there are more boys than girls, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we have to think about those cultural things when we're making the color of the packet. Uh, when GM made some cars for the Middle East, they, they started to break down because the Middle East is very hot and there's a lot of dust. So, their, their car was not able to work in the Middle East. Okay, the dust was getting in the engine, the weather was too hot, it kept breaking down. So they have to change their they have to change their product for the Middle East and make a different product. Then uh, support services. Which country do you think has the best support services in the world? US. US. What? Well, maybe Japan after that. Okay. So if something breaks in the US, I have no trouble to get the part or that kind of thing. Or in Japan, I have a Toshiba laptop, breaks in Japan, go to the Toshiba store. After sales service is quite good in Korea too, right? I have an LG, that's one reason why I buy Korean product in Korea. Because I had Toshiba laptop, 
really wasn't easy to find so after service in Korea. Where is the Toshiba after service place? Maybe just one in Seoul. But if I buy LG, it's just five minutes away from my house. There's a center I can go, they'll fix the computer for free. Okay, so uh, the US has this kind of support services, but other countries, especially emerging economies, don't have good uh, support or repair services. And if you're selling your product in another country, are you going to give them, set up an office there, maybe just one office in the capital city? So you're not going to have good as, as good service as your home country. So we have to think about things like repair and maintenance, installation, instructions, deliveries, warranty, spare parts. Do you understand spare parts? Yes. So we may have to adapt our product when we sell in another country. So for example, a Brazilian company which makes military equipment. Do you understand military equipment? They sell in the Middle East. Uh, they have to sell them a different type of product with very standardized parts from all over the world. Not very specific parts. So standardized part on the equipment they can buy in another place. They also have to send them a video explaining very clearly how to repair. They don't have the service center in the Middle East to repair. So they have to send them a video showing them, this is what you have to do if this happens, to repair your equipment. Uh, they don't like reading the instructions in the Middle East that much, so they show them by video, they use video. So uh, we, have to, we can adapt our product to try and make that it, it's simpler, it doesn't break as much, that kind of thing when we sell in another market, to try and uh, <laughs> make the support service component better in that country. So you guys will need to think about your product. Do you need to adapt the core component in your product for the other markets? The function, the design, product performance. What about the packaging? How are you going to adapt the packaging and the services? What are you going to do if customers can't get any after service? How are you going to deal with that, that uh, issue? Uh, we've seen that Microsoft, for example, had a problem in Japan with after service. Selling the mic Do you buy the Microsoft Xbox here? No. Not many people. Maybe if you have the Microsoft Xbox and it breaks, what are you going to do? Maybe you have to go to Seoul. Microsoft might have an office in Seoul. But they might, it might not, I don't know. So. Let's talk about the marketing to consumer services. So, more than half of all the world's 500 biggest companies are mainly service providers. So this is how we dif differentiate a service from a product or good. It's intangible, you can't touch it. Can you touch one night stay in a hotel? Can you touch that? No? It's inseparable. We can't separate it from its performance, right? So the one night stay in the hotel, can we separate the one night stay in the hotel from the one night stay in the hotel? No, we can't separate those things. Heterogeneity means that uh, it's the, similar to inseparability, the performance is tied together. And perishability means that once it's finished, it's finished, everything is gone. One night stay in my Hotel, can I repeat that again? Exactly the same experience? No, it's going to be different the next time. So it's perishable, it disappears. You can't repeat it. So this is how we define a service. So we can have services marketed to businesses or consumers. So we can see that these days, especially to developed economies, the services sector is getting more and more important. Do you want to work in the services sector? Tourism. Can you tell me some examples of services sectors? Airlines. Airlines. Hmm? Hotels. Hairdressers. Hairdressers. Food stores. Food stores. Retail. Restaurants. Restaurants. Do you want to work in a service industry? Yes. What one do you want to work in from this list? 
No reason. We just choose one. <laughs> Close. Huh? Close. Close is not on the list. Which one do you prefer from the list? Entertainment. Hmm? Financial services. Where can you get the biggest salary? IT, information or financial services usually pay the largest salaries, right? Uh, these days. <coughs> Education and healthcare also is, government is very involved in those things. So, <coughs> we have some barriers to entry for the global market for consumer services. So the first one is protectionism. So recently Korea made the FTA with, with uh, the US, okay? So do you think that many US service companies can come to Korea and be successful in these kind of areas? Yes. What kind of areas do you think the US company can come to Korea? Anything else? The insurance. Insurance. Entertainment. Healthcare. Healthcare. Okay, what kind of service industry can the U can the Korean companies go to the US and be successful in? Healthcare. So the US healthcare can come to Korea and be successful in Korean healthcare. Huh? Korea seems to be a specialist at plastic surgery. Number one in the world. Yes. yes. So, you know, you don't have to be, especially if you're a smaller country, you don't have need to get that much. You can focus on some areas, right? So Korea has a good plastic surgery industry. You can go to the U.S. with their plastic surgery industry and uh, do well there, right? Anything else? Korea, you think can take it to the U.S. service industry? K-pop? K-pop, movie industry. industry. Mm -hmm. Do you think many US tourists will come to Korea? Mm -hmm. Don't think so. Why not? Does Korea market itself for tourism? I don't, I don't think generally the Asian countries don't, apart from Malaysia, they don't do a very good job of marketing themselves in Europe. Thailand and Malaysia do a good job. But, uh, Japan, Korea and China have very beautiful and nice destinations, but they, they don't market themselves as tourist destinations. Have you seen any advertisements for Japan or China or Korea? Mm -hmm. I Korea? I think maybe China recently did some, some uh, campaign. I'm not sure. Actually, I was very surprised when I went to China because China does no advertising almost. And you have to get a visa to go to China too, right? So that, that's like uh, protectionism in China. They don't allow people. If I have to get a visa to go to China, am I going to go to Korea or China? Maybe I, I, I don't want the hassle of doing the paperwork, right? Paying $100 for the visa. But I was there as, as a transfer student, so anyway, I saw, do you know Yangshuo, Guilin? Yeah. In a very beautiful place in uh, China. Uh, so I think China, if they take away the protectionism, I think, just my own opinion, that China could uh, <coughs> could do well. They have a lot of UNESCO UNESCO uh, places like this. That kind of place, right? Yangshuo in China. It's a very nice for tourism. With river and mountain in the background. You can go on a cruise along the river. But nobody knows about that in Europe, unfortunately. Just I'll tell them when I go there. Right? So, uh, Korea, I think, also similar. They could mark more places for tourism. Uh, but we can see some, what kind of protectionism can there be now between Korea and Europe and Korea and the US? 
if there is no tax, traditionally tax was protectionism. But with the FTA you have no tax. So what kind of protectionism? How can Korea protect their financial service industry against the US companies coming in? Subsidies are support from the government, yes. Another one is to make very complicated uh, reporting rules, that kind of thing. For example, in Europe, they have each country still has its own, mainly its own banks, even though they made the common market. One of the reasons is that they all use different languages. So the financial industry is hard to make your report in ten different languages for ten different countries. Uh, those kind of barriers. Also, the local people, maybe they trust the local bank more than the foreign bank, that kind of thing. So we have also restrictions on the cross-border data flows, protection of intellectual property, and some cultural barriers and adaptation. So, uh, if we can get over these kind of barriers, uh, <coughs> we can get the access to the uh, consumers. We know that some countries are better than others at protecting intellectual property. Okay? For example, uh, China doesn't protect intellectual property very well, so uh, we, if we're selling movies or music, that kind of thing, it's not going to work that well. So, uh, we talked about the branding case in the last class. So, a brand, we said, is a name, term, sign, symbol, design, or combination intended to identify the goods and services of one seller and differentiate them from our competitors. It's very important and it's the usually it's the most valuable company resource. So uh, we can see the, mo the most uh, valuable brands uh, on Forbes. They make usually a list of the world's most valuable Brands, what do you think are the most valuable brands in the world? Apple. After Apple? Google. After Google? Maybe Cola. And not sure my person. So we can see here Forbes makes this list of the world's most uh, valuable brands. <coughs> So we have Apple is, uh, how much is their brand worth? $145 billion. Is that a lot of money? Do you want to buy the Apple brand name? You can have this brand name if you want. Just pay them $145 billion. Okay? Then you can use this wherever you want. Microsoft, Google, Coca-Cola, IBM, McDonald's. Korean company, number seven. Where are the top six companies from? Toyota, G, Facebook. So we can see one Japanese and one Korean and eight American companies. If you go down, we also see many American companies. I see BMW, Verizon, Ford, City, Heineken, Estee Lauder, 4.5, 6.1 billion. Kia. What's this? I never heard of that before. What it's is a that? very small country. Huh? I don't think Ireland has any company here, right? But we can see that the US is leading company for making global brands, leading country. They have the best uh, companies in the world. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> We can see that that is the most valuable company resource. Okay, in Apple's case, worth 145 billion. So, the globalization of brands is getting more. How many of those brands did you know? Almost all of them, right? You know all the brands. People these days know uh, globally. So we said that the company wants to make <coughs> the same image across the different countries. It should be balanced, and it sh we should be able to translate it. So. Apple is very easy image and uh, sound to translate across the countries. So then let's take a break now for 10 minutes.